Hello everybody, I'm El Bristow and you're watching Yellowtopia Gaming and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Live. We are starting today with Season 3 of Kerbal Space Program Live. If you were watching last week, you will have noticed that the mission to Juna that we have been running over the last three weeks was a catastrophic failure. We crashed into the surface of Duna and we lost all three of our flagship Kerbals, Jebediah, Bill and Bob. Now, as a result of this failure, unfortunately the Kerbin space program was forced into foreclosure. They no longer had the funds to support their space program. But fortunately, the Elatopia Space Administration saw their advert to sell their business. And they have come along with an investment angel Hail Mary Pass to save the space program here on Kerbin. They have brought with them some new technology. They've brought with them new staff. They kicked out a few staff that were uh, hanging around. And they are picking up where the Kerbin space program, <laughs> the Kerbin space program left off. We will have a look in the research and development tree. And we can see that all the research that we did have and the science points that we did have were purchased by the new Elatopia Space Administration. But they have brought with them quite a few new items for the technology tree. Uh, some of them are just reskinned, but some of them are brand new items. For example, we have here the Attachatron prototype docking port. We have the SN strut connector, a stronger strut connector. Up here we have some new wings, we have some fairings. We have uh, got procedural fairings running. We have some, some very interesting looking new science things. We have lots of new parts, lots of new sciencey things for a space station. We have even some new cockpits. We have, look at that, surface mounted air brake. We have, what's up here, more decouplers. No, we already had those. What do we got here? Some new RCS thrusters. Uh, I believe somewhere down here we had, no, not that one. Uh, where's it gone? Here it is, we've got some new lights and things. Lots and lots of new and interesting stuff that has been brought along by the new management. So we will be investigating what all of these do. They've also brought some new staff along with them. So we're going to head over to the astronaut complex and we will see that we have up here... Oh look, we have Jobadiah Kerman. We have uh, Bull Kerman. And we have Bib Kerman. Um, no, no coincidental resemblance to Jebediah, Bill and Bob at all. Um, it, any like, likeness is purely coincidental. Uh, however, these are the uh, three star astronauts that have been brought in by the new Elotopia Space Administration. So uh, they will be heading up our missions in the future. Now... We do. We have come across a, a small bug in the tracking station. Every all of the uh, spacecraft that we had in space are still up there and running, uh, with the exception of one or two which were decommissioned when they took over. Um, for example, the uh, Keithane space station that was a failed mission that was decommissioned. We had one of the uh, failed communication satellites decommissioned, but the rest of the uh, the rest of the space program has been pretty much kept as it was. Um, we can see here we've got some uh, new texture on uh, Kerbin here. The uh, the new Elatopia Space Administration have brought some new mapping technology with them. They've also brought uh, some new uh, well, they've they've discovered that the aerodynamics of Kerbin actually work slightly differently to how the previous administration thought that they did. We'll uh, see what that means a little bit later on. But uh, here we go. Here are all the uh, craft that were in space. For some reason, we don't seem to be able to select them all. See, this one, I mean, suddenly we can't... Oh, I've double-clicked it. I think it's going to take us to it. Are we going to it? I don't know what we've clicked on. I think we clicked on the North Pole flag. 
Oh no, Comsat 1. Okay. <laughs> well, there's Comsat 1. Um, that can probably be decommissioned, but I don't think he's got any fuel. Oh, he has got some fuel. But uh, at some point we can decommission that. The, um, the new Space Administration have got quite a few plans for what they want to do with the space program here on Kerbin. First and foremost of those plans is that they want to put a new space station into orbit. They want to decommission the existing Elitopia space station and replace it with a new higher technology space station. Now we have had a look at the possibility of decommissioning this space station once before and didn't actually really succeed very well but we are going to have another look at that. If it will let me I'm going to try and head up so that we can see the space station. It's this one here. Yes it will. So here is the Elatopia space station and as you can see it's still as it was. We still have Hudzor Kerman up here. He was not kicked out. We still have Durfred and Barfall. It's very difficult to fire staff when they're already 343,000 meters into space. So our plan is going to be to decommission this space station but the problem that we had is it keeps going off center when we burn here because we've got this attached to the side. The reason that's still attached to the side is because that is our escape pod to get our people home and we can't uh, we can't really get them home while that is still attached. I don't know whether this is going to be sufficient to actually decommission this space center, this uh, space station, but we are going to give it a try. Now we do have, if I can click on them, communitrons. This is pointing to mission control and this one round here I believe should be pointing to no let's get a bit closer Trident 8B good um, so we have communication with Kerbin with the mission control to be able to control this once it is no longer staffed so I think what our first uh, our first attempt is going to be is to get these three guys into this escape pod and back down to the planet ready for here we go ready for their approach and we're going to get them hopefully into our new space station we're going to get a new space station built grab on there we go Come on then, right, now you board, lovely, and then Barthel, out you come, let go, so this, oh, let go, put your RCS on, here we go, and, oh, wrong way, this way, Get you in the escape pod. There we go. And board. Okay, so our escape pod is now ready for its return. We are going to... Oh, where are we? Control from here. Hide that out of the way. And we are going to undock... No, this one. There we go, undock which oh why is there only two of them are one of you in there yes Hudzor's in there okay uh, okay let's switch to that then out you come Hudzor let go get your rockets on out you come and you head down and join them Grab 
and board. Ooh, okay, right. So, all three of them now are in here. Let's get the RCS on and we'll push ourselves back a little bit. Let's close our docking shield. And we need to make sure that we are not going to hit the space station when we burn away. We've done that before. There we go. So we're not going to if we burn that way. However, are we anywhere near the periapsis? Nope, quite the opposite. So let's speed ourselves up until we get round to there. Sure we're pointing retrograde and let's burn we'll watch the periapsis make sure that comes inside the atmosphere we've got a new fuel indicator and everything up here new mod uh, we'll take this into like 35,000 meters like we did before there we go 33 that's close enough <clears throat> now they are going to be heading in what we want to do is if we can switch back to the space station no we can't so let's do that manually switch to and we are going to see if we can deorbit the space station too while it is just about in communication. We have some very limited movement. Turn the SAS off. ourselves and we'll get our SAS on there right so this is now heading in the right direction so we are going to burn with this to see if we can deorbit this although there's not you're kidding me there's no fuel in this thing we totally emptied this thing out of fuel didn't we hmm okay <laughs> yeah absolutely nothing whatsoever and there's no spare fuel tanks on this. I wonder if we can do it with mono propellant. That will take some time. Why did I do this at the periapsis? That was a bit stupid. Um, right. Well, let's let's see how much effect the SAS will have yeah that's going to take ages so I guess the only way we're going to actually deorbit that is to give it some fuel so we'd have to send up a craft and give it some fuel the alternative would be that we just leave it there as debris and we'll come back to it at another time. So we will turn off the lights. Or not. Maybe we'll just leave the lights on. <laughs> um, it's got power. It's got a connection. It's got solar panels. So it's okay for now. What's more important is that our astronauts get home. So we'll switch back to that and we will watch these guys come down to land and then we will start to have a look at getting a new space station designed and built. Let's speed ourselves right up. It will slow us down, yeah it's slowing us down already so Shame that this is doing this at night actually because you would be able to see the new textures and things 
that are in play. We have some new clouds and things on Kerbin, but as this is a night landing, unfortunately I don't think you're going to see them, but plenty of time for that, plenty of time for that. Um, right, we don't need these engines on the back here really, but we'll wait until we get a bit deeper into the atmosphere before we uh, try and use those. Let's point our backside the direction we're going so that that is going to take the brunt of the heat that we've got coming in from the atmosphere. Okay, so let's deploy our parachutes. Oh, okay, there goes the heat shield. We don't need that anymore. And there go our parachutes to slow us down. We will turn off our SAS and our RCS. We haven't got any RCS anymore. And you can just see here the effects of the uh, the new cloud effects that are in play with a, a new mod that I have added in. Volumetric clouds they are. And hopefully these parachutes will see us nice and gently down. Nice new texture on the moon up there. Lots of new mods been added. Lots of new mods. Coming down on 500 meters and our parachutes will deploy fully. There they go. And then we will be ready for our sploosh. Oh, there's a sploosh. That's our engine splashing down. Oh, 150 uh, Forget this. This is taking too long. Come on, hurry up. 50 meters. <laughs> and... Sploosh. We are down. Okay, so Barful, Hudzor and Durfred are safe. We can recover this vessel and head back to the space center. No science from that mission because they were just returning home from the space station. But it is now time for us to have a look at what we are going to do about our new space station. And as I said, we have a lot of new parts that we can be sending up to the space station. So we're going to start by having a look at the sciencey things that we can start construction with. Obviously we have our mobile processing lab, as we have had before, but we now also have What's this? A cyclotron. This module provides a state-of-the-art compact particle accelerator useful for generating quarks as well as heating up snacks. <laughs> we have the kibble storage for all your kibble storage and transportation needs guaranteed to maintain freshness or your money back. We have a kibble storage junior, same thing but smaller. We have the new THNKR science lab. This module provides all the instruments, computers and snacks Kerbal researchers need to find out just how fascinating space really is. You'll need to have experiment modules attached to your station to give them something to do. So this is a new science lab that we are going to be starting with. And it looks very much like the kind of uh, parts that we've seen before, but clearly serves a different purpose. Uh, what do we have here? A spectrometron. This device bombards rock and soil samples with quark, producing a detailed profile of composition. It requires a zero-g environment, so must be used in orbit. After analysis, you can transmit the data back home for full value. So this allows us to transmit soil samples back home at 100% value instead of the reduced value that you would normally get for transmitting. So we definitely want one of those on our space station. We also then have a biological research lab which was developed to advance Kerbal's understanding of how living things adapt to space and to help develop better life support systems for long-term crewed missions. We also have the advanced materials lab developed to test new materials and manufacturing processes in microgravity. Again, new ways of us making some science. So, 
Unfortunately, we can't take everything with us because otherwise it'll be ridiculously heavy. I mean, this thing weighs 20 tons. The old science lab weighed three and a half tons. So this is extremely heavy. This weighs a further 15 tons. So this in total is 35 tons. That's not going to go very far through our atmosphere. So we may have to do this piece by piece. Now, to do that, we're going to need a lot of docking ports. What do we have here? We have some small docking ports. We don't have any large docking ports. We haven't yet unlocked them. So, we're in a little bit of a catch-22 situation because we can't unlock the items that we need to be able to use the items that we need to be able to unlock them. So, what we're going to need to do is to send something like this up, as it is, with small docking ports on it, and then attach some way of, of altering those to become large docking ports later on. It's going to be it's going to be tricky. Um, so, science lab, and what do we want to send up first? Grade quarks, pro grade quarks, eccentric quarks, creature comforts, creature comforts, what's that? How much are the animals in the zoology bay enjoying being in space? Alright, oh, the zoology bay is another thing that we can send up with some aminals in it. Um, right, so what I think the, the situation is, we have these various different modules, and what we do is we send up the station and we dock these modules with the station and have to bring these back to get the science points. So it's not just as simple as sending them up and, you know, automatic science points, yay. We do have to bring them home again. So it needs to be able to undock. So what we're gonna have to do is to go with things like some adapters, like so, and one on the bottom. And then we can use some of the docking ports that we have unlocked uh, which is these ones I hate how they don't yeah they don't like attach properly um, I wonder if there's something we can do that's a reaction wheel actually it's probably not a bad idea to take a reaction wheel with us um, some fuselage see we've got structural fuselage there's a heat resistant one, we don't need heat resistant. These don't contain anything, they don't contain fuel or anything, but they are good for just kind of attaching stuff to. Um, let's, we can attach, yeah, so we can attach docking ports to either end of this, and that makes these much more, whoops, much more useful, there we go. Okay, so this thing is now pretty heavy. Um, we can actually find out exactly how heavy by adding the Kerbal Engineering System to the back of it. Uh, well, okay. Haha, <laughs> 33, nearly 34 tonnes this thing weighs. Um, obviously it has no thrust or delta V at the moment. So that we will have to uh, we'll have to work out as we go. Now we need to add a launcher to this. Hello, the Lord sixty three. How are you doing? How do I like dubstep? I mm, I like some. I um. I can't say I'm a massive fan of dubstep, but um, no, some of it, some of it's not too bad. Right, we have a docking port. We then need to probably going to need to go to a larger engine, and we're going to have to because we're really going to need to push this thing into space. So we're going to need. I'm going to go for two of these. Um, um, I 
think I think we've got everything I want to try these out at some point solid rocket boosters for stage separation they're the same as the separatrons but they're extremely aerodynamic and uh, they look really cool um, but we don't need them at the moment um, It's really hard to know whether or not this is going to be any good, but we won't know unless we try it. So we are going to call this the ESA-1 for the first launch by the Elitopia Space Administration. They decided it was important to launch a new space station. The ESA-1 is the first launch... No, I've already said that. Okay, that'll do, that'll do. Right, now, something that's just occurred to me do we need a processing lab to be able to use the science lab? I don't think so. Needs one crew to operate. Needs three researchers. We're only sending one person up at the moment, so this won't be operational straight away. Um, who are we sending up? Uh, oh, we can send up all of them at once. Oh, should we do that? Jobadiah, Bull, Bull, and uh, Bib, as well as Hudzor. We could send them all up together. And. But then they've got no way of getting home again, have they? Only one can come home. So, yeah, we're not going to do that. What we'll do, Hudzor was on the space station before. So, Hudzor is going to go up in the Mark II cockpit. Hey there, quick exotic project. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Hudzor, yes, yeah, so Hudzor Kerman is going to lead our space station expedition to launch this thing into space, which looks absolutely ridiculous. So we're going to save this and we are going to send it out to the launch pad. Okie dokie, let's hide the. Kerbal Engineer. Wow, that's really wobbly. What the? Um. Right. <laughs> um. I've got a feeling that if we launch this it's not going to get very far um, uh, yeah so uh we need to uh <laughs> i think i think we're going to recover this vessel and in true Kerbal fashion, I think we need more struts. <laughs> now, let's get these struts sorted out, shall we? Let's let's hide Kerbal Engineer, hang on. Let's configure visible buttons, Kerbal Engineer, close that, right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. what the, what happened there? Okay, I want to take that off. There we go. Um, so, struts, 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 struts. There we go. So we're going to strut from here. Can I do this through the... Oh, that's not how you do it. We want four of these. Can we strut through the fairing? We are about to find out. We then want struts from here down to, I don't know, here? Oh, okay. Um, up 
here should all be okay really. Yeah. I think it's these docking ports that have given us the problem. Can we... Oh, we can. Excellent. Oh, it's only done one though. Or two. So we've got four. There we go. So we can strut that. Strut that. Um, and it's, so it's probably this fairing thing that's giving us all the springiness, isn't it? Oops, that didn't work. Right. Check who's in the pilot seat. Yeah, it stuck everybody back in, so let's get rid of those. We'll put Hudzor in the cockpit. And we will save this again so you can send it out to the launch pad again, and we will see what that does. It's still very wobbly in there, isn't it? Oops. Let's, uh... Oh, the docking port's sticking out the side. That's interesting. Oh, no, here we go. No. Can I, if I... How do I deploy the fairing? I've no idea. <laughs> um, right, so we need another plan. 